A family member snapped this photo of 14-year-old Alessandro Gelmini and 17-year-old Alex Corbett hunched over in an ice cave enjoying their hike mere moments before their world came crashing down on top of them. It was a beautiful, you know, August after or morning, and I said, oh, you know, let's just go for a hike. We live in this beautiful area. Um, just like a no normal day, woke up, um, got packed for the hike, and then uh, went off to Snoqualmie Falls. What happens in the wintertime, as you can see behind me, is we get lots and lots of snow that kind of builds up throughout the winter. And in this particular case, where they were, it was at the bottom of an avalanche chute that had built up all winter, and then the creek had created an ice cave. And uh, we decided just to rest and just look at the falls, and we noticed the ice cave, and so we took some pictures around it and whatnot, and then my friend Alec asked me if I want to go inside, and I said, yeah, sure. And that's when we heard the sound. We turned around and we just saw all the spray of water. And as if something had fallen down in on all those rocks and sand and all that. And then we started calling out for the boys. Heard nothing and then we right away um, got out our cell phones and dialed 911. Um, while I was in the cave, uh, in the first half an hour or so, I didn't know if Alec, where he was, or if he was alive or not, so I felt pretty lonely, and uh, felt pretty despaired, and hopeless, and uh, at one point I tried ending my own life. I remember the paramedics coming to me and saying, are you okay, is everything alright, you're so quiet, um, you know, you're not crying, or you're not being emotional, and I said, no, I have to be strong for Alessandro. I have to be strong for him. Um, I knew that Alec was still in the ice cave when uh, he, he was moving around his foot, trying to break free, and he accidentally kicked me. And so I, uh, I grabbed onto his foot and, uh, and uh, made contact with him, and just talked to him. The uh, measures that the firefighters took to get them out was we uh, originally had, we were treating it like it was going to be a, a structural collapse. The fire department and then the search and rescue started coming up. And these guys, you could just tell that they had been running all the way up that mountain. And they were just sweating out. So we took chainsaws and tools like that up to the site, not knowing that the ice was going to be so so thick and hard that we couldn't get through it with hand tools. And we turned out to use the chainsaws to cut blocks off the top of them and to remove the snow from them. And I think the first thing that the boys smelled was they smelled the exhaust because they couldn't hear anything. I mean, they, they were shouting, but nobody could hear them. They had no idea really where we were in the ice cave, so they had to pick on where to start digging down. And luckily enough, where they picked uh, to start digging was actually over my back. We didn't know exactly where they were. We were going off of a, a, a hunch, a gut feeling of kind of where their general location was. And we began to remove blocks of ice. Once we heard one of the boys was underneath there talking to us, it became very exciting. And then I said, but I won't be totally, totally excited until I hear a second, you know, until we hear the second voice. So when they brought all of it to me, and he opened up his eye, he could only, one was totally sh closed shut because of the injuries, but he could open up one, and again, it was this one eye, it was just bright blue, and it was looking around, just, you know, it just reminded me of when he was born. I said, and I thought, wow, he just had a rebirth. Uh, the injuries that I had from the ice cave were fractured uh, spine, the uh, L4, uh, fractured my right ankle, um, I had nerve damage in my left arm, uh, broke my nose, broke my cheekbone, uh, my leg, my right thigh was swollen so they had to cut, out, cut it open without all the fluids. The doctor said for the recovery that since I was young uh, I was going to heal faster. You know the good news he was 14 and a half, almost 15, so when you're that young you tend to heal pretty, pretty quickly. But I spent about uh, two months in, in a stretcher because I couldn't walk. And then finally uh, I got out, was able to walk around, but I had to le pretty much learn how to rewalk. I, I probably, the first thing that comes to my mind of how our relationship has changed, I, I think maybe I'm just a little bit more protective of him. I was at home 
a lot of the time and so my relationship with my family grew. My relationship with my son, it's kind of hard to tell because he was just starting high school and just becoming a teenager and um, I think that story is going to be worked out in the future more so. You know, one thing that's important for people to understand is, is that, you know, we see on the news all the time that people are going to the mountains and getting caught in avalanches or people getting caught in an in a ice cave or something like that. And I think it's really easy for people to put blame on them, saying that they must have done something wrong. And that's not the case. There's always a little bit of a risk when it comes to traveling in the mountains. Um, it's important that people prepare themselves for the risk that they may face when they're traveling in the mountains. And th as long as people are a plan, plan for going into the mountains, then it, it is safe. It sort of reminds me of, you know, when you're a kid and you fall off your bike, you know, and then, ah, or if you're a kid and they're in a car accident, ah, oh, do I want to get in the car again? But I do, I really believe that I think it's great if he went back there. Uh, the risk is worth activities like traveling in the mountains because the mountains are beautiful. <laughs> it's uh, a gorgeous terrain. Uh, we, we relax, at least for me, uh, when I'm in the mountains, I feel real relaxed. Uh, and that's really, I think, what it is, is just the beauty of, of the mountains and being in the wilderness. The icy experience has definitely um, deepened my appreciation for life. And uh, it's also made me very aware of, of my surroundings. And I can definitely say I'm a lot more um, cautious in what I do, really think things through before I do them, most of the time at least.